Welcome to the Inside the Sales Playbook Show, where on each and every episode, we dive into the actual sales processes, the plays, the strategies working for sales teams today. We don't get into a high-level overview. We get into the actual weeds of what some of the fastest growing and most successful organizations and executives are doing today to drive revenue and grow their business. And we've got two sponsors of today's show. The first is Sales Kit. Sales Kit takes the guesswork out of scaling your sales knowledge all on one great platform. No longer do you have to have things in Google Drives, Dropbox folders, and various other places. Sales Kit makes it easier than ever for your team to access the sales knowledge that actually works. You can get a free trial of that at GetSalesKit.com. And we're also sponsored by my book, Raise Your Standards, The Definitive Guide to Building Seven-Figure Sales. You can get a free copy of this book to help grow your sales, whether you're an entrepreneur, a sales leader, or a sales contributor at GetSalesKit.com forward slash book. I'm your host, Mark Evans, and I'm here today with an individual who we've already had a really good conversation, so I know this is going to be an awesome episode. Help me welcome Mr. Mark Daniels to the show. Mark, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Well, Mark, it's great having you on here, but how about you give the listeners some context? You're the CEO of a company called Results BI. So what is Results BI, and how do you help your clients achieve their mission? Well, Results BI has a methodology, methodology, a sales methodology, um, and actually a strategic planning methodology where we've um, broken it down into five steps. We call it the R5 process. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm going to step back uh, for a minute, Mark, but because I really started developing this process way back in 1979. Okay. Love so, it. So it's got some miles on it. It's got yeah, some use uh, cases. Uh, I launched my first company in 1979. Um, this is, uh, you know, uh, I'm actually older than I look a little bit of plastic surgery here and a little bit of hair dye. Um, but, um, all kidding aside, I was blessed to launch a company in 1979 while I was still in college. It was called computer discount of America. And, uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I had a concept, I had an idea, but I didn't have a plan. And, uh, I was fortunate that it really took off in 79 and 80 and 81 because, we were the only computer company around. Um, I stood on the floor, the sale, the, the floors of trade shows with the likes of Stephen Jobs. And, uh, you know, right there at the computer fair in 1980, he was six booths away from my booth. That's in incredible. America. So um, that's really when the methodology started. And um, in 1981, the country went through a really tough financial period. It was called stagflation. And it was, you know, it was a financial crisis. Um, and uh, a lot of companies were struggling and failing. And that's when I realized that I needed to have a plan. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's really at the early age of 23, 24, I really started to read and just absorb information. And I came up with the the first part of, uh, of, of the R1 methodology yeah. is like, you need a plan. <laughs> and uh, so I've developed the R5 methodology really over 40 years. Um, you, you, uh, you know, as you know, I'm blessed to live on Martha's Vineyard. I am um, the, the most recent company prior to joining results was diligent board member services. And I wish I'd known about you there because I had an SDR team of over 36 people in, in over seven different countries, and wow. I could have really used sales kit then. Wow. But, um, uh, diligent board member services is really where I refined all five steps of the process. And uh, we were fortunate to sell that company to private equity for $942 million in 2016. That's incredible. Wow. And you were one of the, obviously, I was one of the founders. I was one of the founders of Diligent Board Member Services. And don't get too excited. Those $940 million, those were New Zealand dollars. (laughs) That's only $600 million. Only a mere 600. Don't get too, don't don't get too too excited. I only own 4% of the company. Okay. Hey, that's still a great amount. That's a success story in and of its own. That's a great. Yeah. So the methodology is, and I I ran several other very successful companies over the years. Um, one of them in the, is in the news today, GameStop. Yes. Type in www.gamedealer.com. I used to own it. See where it goes. Well, it goes to GameStop. Goes to GameStop. Okay. So one of the- um, So, um, you know, I sold uh, GameDealer.com to um, Electronics Boutique, which in turn- sold to GameStop, 
So, um, you know, I've had a lot of other really fortunate yeah. successes and developed this methodology over, year, over the years. So what results does is you put together a plan. All too often, people put together a plan with their executive team and then don't do anything with it. They yeah. think because their executive team was there for this three-day retreat, we're locked in a room for two days, and they're all brilliant people. They've yeah. hired great, they've built a great staff around them. Mm -hmm. They think the plan's just going to happen. Well, now we have a plan. And the CEO steps back and says, you know, wow, we have a plan. Yeah. Then what? You need to share your plan. You need to share your plan with your whole company and excite everybody about it. So that's actually the second step of the methodology. Um, you have to share your plan, right? Wow. Um, so, you know, after you share your plan with your executive team in your whole company, then you have to, you have to execute it. So yeah. you, have to, you have to execute that plan. And execution, the plan is actually the easy part. The execution is the hard part. Yeah. Well, everybody's got great ideas. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Mark? Harvard you know? Business School. Harvard Business School says that 85 percent of their business, 85 percent of businesses um, fail to fail to execute the plan. Hmm. Why do you think that is, Mark? Um, you know, a plan is is really just a, a, a vision or a dream. It's sort of like, uh, you know, perhaps you set a New Year's resolution and I won't pick on you. Uh, I'll pick on me. You pick away. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I've set many, many New Year's resolutions over my life. And do you know that 90% of people are already, have already stopped executing their New Year's resolution? Oh, I totally believe it. Yeah. I it's totally January it. 27th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not even a month has passed. And they've already failed to execute the plan. Yeah. And execution really, um, execution is the key. And it takes a certain amount of being relentless in every week, once a week. You know, that's all you have to do is just sit there and review your numbers. Mm -hmm. So re remember, you put the plan together, you share your plan, and then you start executing it. And now is reviewing the numbers, is that step four or is that just a functionality no, of the it's, execution? It's part, like a good it's practice? part of the execution. Um, and you, you actually have to have a weekly meeting where you have, whether it's dashboards, whether it's a list of your strategic projects that were part of your plan. And you have to sit down with your executive team at least once a week and figure out what's on track. Mm -hmm. Hold them accountable. Congratulate the successes. That's very important. You don't want this meeting to be a beat up meeting. Yeah. Um, where, where, where you're, you know, angering, angering your staff and, and, and chucking barbs at them. You want to sit back and say, Hey, Mark, you know, at the beginning of the quarter, you felt we could do this, but I see it's falling a little bit behind. What challenges are you facing? Mm, okay. Can you, so you, you tell me your challenges? Conversation. Yeah. You tell me those challenges. And I say, Well, What's causing that roadblock? And you roll up your sleeves and you help your management team undo those roadblocks, right? Yeah. You have to undo those roadblocks. Um, Mark, Mark, real quick, how could we, because that reminds me of something, how could someone in a sales management role, how could that be applied to them? Give me some examples or, oh, well, you know, great. what? Yeah. Well, in a sales management role, um, all too often, um, sales companies, and I, I see this still at just an alarming rate, they, they, they look at a salesperson's quota and they look at percentage to quota. Those numbers mean nothing whatsoever. The numbers you want to look at on a daily basis are leading metrics. Yes. The leading metrics like, okay, to, to get this person to quota, they have to make 10 phone calls. They have to make 10 connections a day. Mm -hmm. They have to send out one proposal per week. They need to close um, two proposals per month. Mm -hmm. The quota becomes irrelevant. It's going to happen magically. It's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just going to happen. I can't tell you how many times I go in and, oh, yeah, we track everybody. Here's, let me see your dashboard. 
And, and it says, oh, Mark is only 50% of quota, 50% of where he should be. And, you know, I'm picking on both of us when I use the name Mark. Yes, okay. it works. <laughs> it's okay. effective. So, so, so I'm sorry I'm using you. I'm also using me as an example, which I often do because I don't like to point fingers at people. Um, you, you know, you don't want to look at that. You want to make sure you're leading metrics. And maybe it's not even my fault or your fault. It's because one of the leading metrics is how many sales qualified leads are we getting from marketing? Mm -hmm. Something you have zero control over. Right. So now you have to go back and you have to look at your marketing department and yeah. you have to look at that leading metrics. How many leads are we getting off of our website? How many are properly qualified? Maybe there's something broken there. Yeah. But the main thing is you don't put together a plan. And, and think that it's just going to magically happen. And if you wait until the end of a quarter, until your VP comes in, or even to the end of the first month, and your sales VP comes in and says, oh, you know, we just, we, we're way behind quota. And, uh, you know, it's just too late to fix it. It is too late to fix it. Yes. It's too late to fix it. But if you're looking at it every week, you can make adjustments and fixes. Yeah, I think it goes back to the old saying that I once heard. If you're just a degree off at the start of a journey, whether it's an airplane or a boat, right? It doesn't sound like a lot, but over time, that can put you in an entirely different state and way off your way off of your target. Yeah, I really agree with that. When it comes to the actual like sales playbook, you've been successful at a lot of companies. You've helped develop these sales teams and it sounds like really grow and scale these sales teams. What are some of the things that you've seen really strong sales managers do? right from uh, like kind of this day-to-day -day from a coaching, from a reviewing these numbers. Um, and, and why don't more sales coach or why don't more sales managers just do this stuff, Mark? It, I mean, it seems so uh, uh, intuitive. Well, why aren't they doing more of that? It is. It's so, I think it's so intuitive. Um, uh, you know, I learned early on when I was running Computer Discount of America to have a daily stand-up meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd walk into each department and I only had four departments at that point in time. Um, but, you know, um, and then I'd go back up to my offices, which was by by accounting. But, you know, I'd walk into each department and we'd do a stand up and mm. 15, 10 minute, 10 minute is ideal. Um, yeah. It doesn't even have to be 15 minutes. You know, the, this is what happened yesterday. We had this problem here. Let's fix it. Mm -hmm. You guys can't all go for lunch at the same time. We had a whole time of, of uh, you know, half hour yesterday during lunchtime. Unacceptable because back in the seventies, most of the, most of the eighties, most of the orders came in over the telephone, right? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until 1986, 85 that I launched my first online presence. Yes. And that's before, um, uh, th that's way before Al Gore invented the internet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a part of CompuServe's electronic mall in 1985. Wow. Okay? So you were there. So, that is really, incredible. Uh, I'm sorry. I, that was a sidetrack that I just had to take, but, um, uh, you know, I do a stand up in every department, mm. in every department, and, and I go through and, and just see what problems th that were there. And, and quick stand up. This is what we're. This is what our goal is for today. We mm -hmm. missed yesterday, or we achieved yesterday. And by the way, we had a great week last week. I'm bringing in pizza on Friday. Okay, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, a quick stand up meeting. Acknowledge the successes, and acknowledge the people that really outpace the other ones um, because you want the rest of the team to say, wow, I wish Mark would say something good about me, mm -hmm. you know, and um, do you know what studies will show? Um, and I've read this in so many books. And as you can tell, I got a big yeah, library you behind me. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a few books. Um, you know, so um, you know, I've read this numerous times. Studies will show that it, people care more about acknowledgement by their boss or their leader in front of peers, in front of their peers, than they do about their annual bonus. Wow. Then mm -hmm. their annual bonus. Yeah, so I can that see means that. So much to somebody to get this pat on the back in front of all the people they work with, many of who are their friend, they become friends with. And, you know, then everybody else wants to be recognized. So these stand up meetings have to be like, good job, Mark. Oh, Susan, um, you know, I noticed you only took 20 calls yesterday. Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
um, yes. I was really sick or whatever. And, and then address that issue and remove it. You say, well, you know, you shouldn't come to work if you're sick. Yeah, stay but, home. You know, but fix the problems, whatever. That, that's a very s small example, but you have to roll up your sleeves and figure out what the problem is. Problem is. Our orders are down because this guy, this snot little snows, skinny little kid, Michael Dell, is, is shipping computers from Texas. Um, you know, Dell was one of my first major competitors in the late 80s when I was running Computer Discount of America. So we learned ways to overcome the challenges that I heard from those, those people. And if you have multiple time zones, you might have to do two stand-ups. Mm, okay. Um, or you might have to say, I like an early morning stand-up, but sometimes because you're working a staggered shift, you might have to do your stand-up at 11.45. Okay. Then you get your Pacific people and you get your team before they go to lunch, right? Nice. Your New York East Coast. So those stand-ups stand are so, so, so important. You do yeah. it quick. And it doesn't always have to be the CEO. It could be um, the, the, the VP of that department or the, the whoever's the head of that department. Um, if you are an owner of a business or a CEO of a business and you have five different, let's say, business or business units running it like that at one point in time, I recommend that you try to jump into one of those stand-ups a week. Okay. So because, jump around to all those. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, why so? Hey, I'm going to go to the marketing stand-up this mm -hmm. morning. I'm going to go to the sales stand-up today. I'm going to go to the um, shipping department stand-up tomorrow. And maybe on Fridays, you go to the stand-up or the Thursday, you say, I'm going to go to the problem stand. Yeah, no, there's a big problem in sales on day one. Yeah. I'm going to go back and see if it's still there. Yeah, I like that. So, so what does that do? In your experience, how has that helped you know, companies? Is it over-intimidating? Hey, the boss is here. I'm only going to hear the things that I want to hear. What, walk us through that. You have, to, you have to become a very good listener. Um, Early in my career, I was not a good listener. Um, in any relationship, partner relationship with your wife, your partner, your husband, mm -hmm. you need to learn to listen. Mm -hmm. If you don't listen, that relationship, unfortunately, I hate to say this, people, it's doomed. Yeah, it's not going to work. It's, it's not a relationship. It's not going to blossom. It's the same way in a business relationship. I've seen way too many CEOs go in and say, this is what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. You're not there every day. Yeah, you're up in your your your, your office you tower. All in your office. You need to listen, and then you need to um, use your expertise to to solve the problem. Mm. It's your it's meetings. Sometimes for for some people, meetings are a bane of of their existence. Right? They're like mm -hmm. oh, meetings, oh, meetings, meetings. No, every meeting should have a clear purpose. Yep. And they are the biggest tool, I believe, that a CEO has. One-on-one -on -one meetings with individual teams, identifying the problems, and putting in a fix. I have, an, I have a staff meeting every week religiously. For it, it blocked out for 45 minutes. I never let it go more than an hour. And I get a report from each department. And we work together as a team. Mm-hmm to figure out what we can do, how we can help each other, fix the problem at hand, get something back on track. Yeah. Figure out what's broken. So it and that's what so many people issues. do. They put together a plan and I don't care whether it's a company or a sales department. You have a sales plan. If you address that plan every week, every day or every, every week, certainly complete review of the plan every week, daily standups, 15 minutes, no more than 10, 15 minutes. Got to get them on the phones. Got to get them on their computers. Yep. Got to get them, you know, we're doing a lot distant, via distance today. Got to get them off the Zoom and back to what they're paid yep. to do. Um, have a tight agenda. Um, and, you know, th th that's key. And then, you know, the, the final component uh, of the, the R5 is don't wait to the end of a year. You know, there, there's a book written uh, a few years back called Rockefeller Habits. Yeah, yeah, by Vern Harnish. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. So Rockefeller died 
died over 100 years ago, guys. You know, he did have some great habits. One of the habits he put together was to put together a yearly plan. And then he would, every day he'd have a lunch with his five business leaders, a lunch. Listen, sounds a lot like what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. A lunch with his five business leaders. And every day, a different business leader would talk about their department. And what they were doing. One was in charge of transportation, moving the oil. The other one was in charge of finding the oil. Another was in charge of refining the oil. And he would talk about problems. Well, back then, you could have a yearly plan. Yeah. You need to adjust your plan quarterly. Mm, Okay. I can't tell you. I I flew in from New Zealand on March 4th. And um, anybody that put together a strategic plan in December... By the time March came around, that plan was out the window. Yep. And for the next few months, I I said to people, did you review your, did you adjust your plan? No, I don't know what to do. You need to adjust your plan. Adjust your plan. You need to adjust your plan. Mm -hmm. Every quarter, you need to sit down and do a deep dive into your plan. It might take a whole day, but review your plan every quarter. Make the adjustment that you have to make. I like that. I really like that. Mark, I think this is a good point. Let's, I want us to transition to the final five. So these are five rapid fire questions that I'll ask and you answer. There's been some great nuggets here. Um, and yeah. I'm excited to hear what your answers are. So, uh, final five, let's get started here. Give me a favorite sales or business related movie that you have. <laughs> oh gosh. Show me the money. <laughs> Jerry Maguire. Yeah. That's gotta great. be that. Okay. Um, gotta be that. Love it. Uh, do you have a favorite sales book? I know you got yeah a lot of books, a lot to choose from. What's a favorite sales? Oh book yeah. Well, um, you know, for years I I um, I worked the you know really understanding the customer's problem, and I forget the name of the book now, but my sales library is on that shelf there. A uh, spin selling. Oh yeah, by Neil Rackman. Yeah. Rackman. You know, spin selling right here. Boom. Spin Look at that. Plug. <laughs> Love it. And then one of the original copies. I've got one of those too. They're awesome. Yeah. Well, but the thing is I was running diligent board member services and um, we did electronic board books for uh, the board of directors mm. during that company that during that, you know, I had to go into companies like um, Trump international Exxon mobile um, um, and, and, and convince them that they needed a board portal and that it would be secure. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a better way to transport documents to their board members. And, uh, you know, I relied heavily on the teachings uh, of spin selling during that period of time. Now there's other great sales books out there. And I think it depends really on what you're selling, what price point it is and and what, what's it at. But a lot of success that I had at diligent board member services was based on spin selling. Yeah. And that business was purchased. I was just looking uh, up that and selling into the boards of Heineken and Domino's. I mean, some of these major, major organizations that it it obviously worked. What, uh, what do you know now that you wish you would have known Mark when you first got into sales, when you first started that first business years? (laughs) To plan, (laughs) to plan. All right. That makes sense. I like that. Um, you, You know, uh, I think it was, uh, you know, Ben Franklin said, uh, you know, uh, having having no plan is a plan to fail or something yep. very close to that. So, uh, you know, I just was by the seat of my pants and, and not doing proper planning. So have a plan. All right. I like that. Mark, what's a favorite purchase of yours? Can be business or personal uh, over the past year that's been under $100? Under $100. Um, favorite purchase of mine in the last year that's under a hundred dollars. Um, well, something that I'm using a lot of, um, is a, um, you know, I'm very health conscious and, um, during this pandemic, uh, I, I got a little bit lazy. I gained about 10 pounds and, uh, a few times uh, I, I had a headache and everything's fine, but, um, I, I got this blood pressure thing and it was $89 and you wrap it around your column and it it cut cuff and it it goes to your cell phone and it tells you exactly what your blood pressure is. Oh, that's pretty good. 
you know, since I got that blood pressure cuff, I, I, I've, uh, you know, dropped 10 pounds off of the 20 pounds I gained. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's motivated me to get back to my fighting weight. And uh, yeah, that's one of the, I don't know if it's, I guess it probably is my favorite. I use it every day and I, I, I love technology. So it's just a cool little gadget. And you're tracking I it. When I, I, I watch it on TV, you put two fingers on it and it does your heart thing. I, you know, so there's, there, there's, I don't have that one, but um, you know, there's. There's some options out there. That's pretty yeah. cool. Mark, is there an executive or an author or a business leader that you're following right now that you really like, whether it's books, blogs, podcasts, or shows? Oh gosh. Yeah. I'm following a bunch of them. So, um, uh, you know, early on in my career, um, when um, the profit margins of Computer Discount of America tumbled and I decided to sell that business, um, I got out of it. The margins were eroding. Um, it was that snot-nosed little kid from Texas um, uh, that, that that was really yeah. destroying the, the, the yeah. my computer business. Um, anyway, um, you know, I, I followed at that point in time, I bought the Tony Robbins tape series. Yeah. Well, I just did a, a five day challenge with Tony Anthony Robbins. And I, I still think he, he really is just an amazing um, person. But right now, Results is having a lot of success with uh, sales funnels. So I've been following Russell Brunson, yeah. who is the head of Click Funnels. I've been following Dean Graciosi and, um, and I also, um, you know, I've been following um, uh, the the head of uh, bestseller publishing. I have a book coming out um, called Execute. Okay. Um, uh, so I'd say, um, you know, bestseller publishing, and I'm trying to think of his name, which is terrible. I I, I, I listen to him a lot, but um, but you know, people that are working in the Click Funnels um, really um, bringing in sales um, with minimal sales efforts. Yeah, which maybe goes against what you do. No, what funnel is a great component which puts somebody through a sales funnel and then prompts you to call them when they hit a certain threshold. Mm -hmm. um, so it really enable, enables you to automate some of your leads and make sure you're only wasting those dials or investing those dials uh, on really good leads. So. Yeah, I, I really like Russell. He's a tremendous, tremendous uh, internet marketer. If you're not following him, you definitely should. Mark, if our listeners and viewers want to connect with you, learn more about the book that's coming out, um, learn more about Results BI, where's the best place for them to do that? Um, we're launching, uh, well, ResultsBI.com is, is live today, but we're launch, relaunching that on February 1 with some new graphics and, and new look and feel. So I'd say ResultsBI.com. And, uh, you know, the BI stands for Business Intelligence. Um, we have Power BI dashboards and all sorts of dashboards right within our in our in our package, and that, that's where the BI component comes from. That makes a lot of sense. Well, awesome, Mark. Awesome conversation. Love hearing about all the things you've done and continue to do. Excited to get that book when it comes out. That's uh, Mr. Mark Daniels with Results BI. He's got a book coming out here shortly. But Mark, thanks so much for taking us. No, thank you. Thank you for the time. My Appreciate pleasure. it. All the best. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Mark.